Alex, what are we talking about today? <laughs> I was about to do the exact same thing. <laughs> Whoa, my, my, my light just almost fell. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So I think that we're we're gonna implement because we're do we're trying out a new question answer format. Uh huh. Primarily gonna be me talking. Can you not do that? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny>. Uh huh. <laughs> and. <laughs> Dude, you gotta collect. Dude, you gotta connect to your audience. You gotta stare right at them the entire time. Okay. I thought you were gonna say you have to connect to your audio. I was like, we already spent fifteen minutes doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, because it's primarily gonna be me talking about the thing, and you are going to be my vehicle through which I convey information. Uh huh. Um, we're we're gonna. I'm gonna put on a timer. Sixty gotcha. seconds. I want you to to tell me your uh, thoughts about the thing, so that it's not. I'm not depriving you of your ability to communicate. Okay. All right. I gotta wet my whistle real quick. Go wet that whistle. Okay. All right. What are we talking about? Okay, we're gonna talk about the Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, yeah. What about the Bride of Frankenstein? I'm not completely sure, but this is what I thought about the film. So I thought the you entire have some film. What's on your face right there? It's it's water. It's water because I drank oh. out of the mason jar. Uh, can you add <laughs> like ten more seconds of my timer, please? <laughs> no. You so much time. A minute is so long. Just keep talking. Okay, so I thought the entire movie was kind kind of meh. Uh, what I what I really got out of it was uh, how Frankenstein kind of was kind of just like this like inverse Christ kind of figure, you know? You know what I mean? I know exactly Where, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Where it, it's uh, he has he has his um, downfall. He has this this great uh, little uh, point seconds. where. Dang it! Oh my god! <laughs> Keep going. Go on. Hurry up. <laughs> uh, Okay, but he, he kind of has like a similar like rise and downfall of, of Christ. That, yep, that was one minute that, exactly. God dang it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, we're, we're adding a little bit of fun to it, you know? Yeah, yeah, just a little, just a little, 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 little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, what we're going to talk about. Yes. First of all, I just want to point out, we're talking about The Bride of Frankenstein, which mm -hmm. is a, a movie that's near and dear to me, not because I like it, but because Frankenstein is, like, my second favorite book, if not my favorite book of all time. Like, I love that book. I've read it, like, 15 times. Um, so this is just something that, like, I watched this movie for the first time in my horror film class last semester, or I should say the fall semester of this past year. And I got like, as I was watching, I was like, "Oh, like this is this is really interesting." The fact that the stuff that they didn't put into the first Frankenstein movie, they put into this one, like the old blind man and stuff. That stuff from the book. Okay. Which I, I've never read the book. It's one of the best books you'll ever read, and I like it for the same reason that Hamlet is my favorite Shakespeare play. It's because uh, I was super, super emo in middle school and high school, and I really love characters that just have the worst lives, and all they do is complain about stuff. <laughs> like Hamlet and uh, Victor Frankenstein. Is it Victor or is it Henry? Henry. No, Henry's his friend. Victor no. is the book character. What? I've read this book so many times. I could, it's Victor in, in Frankenstein. The movie, in the movie, his name was Henry. That's what it is, because I, yeah. I know it's the reverse of what it is. It's and Victor Frankenstein is the character. Yeah, yeah. Henry is is one friend. Anyway, um, but he and uh, Hamlet have like perfect lives. They manage to ruin it by themselves, and then complain about the fact that everyone else has somehow ruined their life. <laughs> oh my god! It's been. I've met way too many people that that haven't. That have that exact same view. Yeah, me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right. So here is our topic. Uh, real quick, I'm gonna set a timer. We're gonna max out at 20 minutes for this. Okay. I think that was loud. Okay. And then at 20 minutes, we like die or something. 
right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Be prepared to laugh because the, the way that I had this written down in my notes for like six months made me laugh mm-hmm. every single time. Great. I'm ready. The Bride for of Frankenstein is the OG Sonic fan fiction. <laughs> Elaborate. <laughs> you don't just know what I mean? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're so fucking right. Right? It's what it is. It's just fanfic. Oh my god. And I have like so many like I have a full page of notes about this. Oh my god. Like that's one of those things where I said it and it just clicked in your brain. It's just like yes. Okay. So I mean from the very beginning. Like, the, the defining characteristic of bad fan fiction is taking a story, putting yourself in it, and mm-hmm. changing everything so that you could be there for, like, the real story. And that is right. exactly what happened in this entire movie. Like, the first sentence out of the whole thing is, so we actually didn't die at the end of the movie <laughs> and here's the whole next movie and this is like the real the good story mm. yep all right yeah, yeah. No. scrap all that other stuff this is where the real stuff's going down man this is where the real money's at now when i say the self-insert character do you know who i'm talking about talking about uh the person who wrote the book at, at the mary beginning. shelley yeah mary shelley and then she's uh, the bride at the end. Yeah, it's the same actress plays the bride of Frankenstein. So it's like the the movie <clears throat> is kind of talking about the concept of an original character, like a self insert character. Uh, like, but instead of having someone new do it, it's having the author reinsert themselves back into the story. And I'll get on this later, but there's actually a really long literary tradition of doing that in books. Uh, uh-huh. But first, there's actually another character. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> this is really interesting, I swear to God. You no, know it's really interesting. Numbers. You know what my favorite number is? One. You know what my <laughs> second favorite number is? Two. Three. <laughs> oh, uh, you baited me. Um, okay. But do you know who? So that's like in story who the self-insert character is but you know there's actually another one who is an actual inserted character from the filmmakers who if you had to guess and uh is is it is it the uh the freaking old guy that with the really big long nose yeah and the guy with the with the people in the jars yes people in the jar guy (laughs) people jar guy yeah i don't know his name but it's basically like mr sinister or something like he has some like obviously evil name yeah. it's hilarious. <laughs> and every time while we were watching that movie in class when they said his name i imagined have you seen young frankenstein no i haven't oh it's so good um it's the that's mel brooks movie me. that's it's my favorite mel brooks movie even more than Spaceballs. um but there's a character whose name is it's cloris leachman and her name is Frau Blucher, and every time uh, they say her name, wherever they are, you can hear horses whinnying in the background because it's like for some reason she's just so evil that it terrifies the horses every time they say her name. Every time they said his name, all I could hear was Frau Blucher. Anyway, <laughs> so but that character is actually played by uh, a friend of the the guy who made both the original Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein, um, where they were both very blatantly gay men who were working in Hollywood back in the 30s or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the other big trope of uh, a a self-insert fan fiction, which is you take your best friend and they're in the story too. And oh, that sweet. guy is also 
a scientist who is just as smart as Frankenstein and also created life out of nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the same character, same accomplishments, but it's just this new character who's just as good as Frankenstein. But it's not, right. not, it's not Frankenstein. It's my own character that I made up. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Literally just fan fiction. <laughs> Could you please cut this out? Yes. You literally just described uh, your movie that you're trying to make. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, well, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna explain. Um, like the point that um, this isn't. Like I don't see it as a bad thing. Yeah. So it's just it's it's a very common writing thing to just kind of make something about yourself and frame it in this other story. Um, no, but what's funny is how much Bride of Frankenstein is just like. Do you know the original Mary Sue story? No. Okay, you know what a Mary Sue is, right? No. What is a Mary Sue? You've never heard that? Okay, so it's everyone says that Ray from the new Star Wars movies is a Mary Sue, who is like a character from fan fiction who's just good at everything for no reason. And uh, everyone just likes them automatically, and they're this big, important person no matter what. Mm-hmm. So I, I will not talk about whether or not I think Ray is one because that's its whole can of worms. But the original story is from a fan fiction, you know, like a fanzine about uh, Star yeah. Trek from back in like the 80s or 70s or something, where the character Mary Sue was the author of self-insert, who was immediately liked by everyone on the Enterprise, was related to Spock, and had like romantic interaction with every single character. Mm-hmm. So it was like, and that's where like the Mary Sue comes from. And that is exactly what happens in Bride of Frankenstein, and I find it hilarious, where even though she's only there at the very end, that author self-insert is a romantic partner to both Frankenstein and the monster within 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And she's also, what do I have here? Oh, uh, she represents the very concept of being pure and good, as opposed to being a monster. Sure. Well, that's what, like, because she comes out and she's not automatically, like, infatuated with the monster. She's a monster herself, and yet she's still repulsed by the idea of the monster. Uh, And so she's supposed to represent, like, humanity and being a good person, which fits so perfectly with, oh, there's this other monster that they made, and it's a woman, and it looks just like me. But she's not a monster. She's super good, and she just like she's the best person ever, and everyone likes her. And she uh, <laughs> she's, she's dating the monster amazing. and Frankenstein at the same time. <laughs> like it's not a big deal. It's like uh, what's her name? Oh, the stupid my immortal. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Harry Potter fanfic, the awful one, the goth Harry Potter fan fiction. No. Dude, there's it's some of the funniest readings ever on YouTube. I think an uh, internet historian did one where he, he does it, and it's like she's dating Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy at the same time, but they're both goth, and also oh, sweet. Harry Potter is a vampire. I want someone to make this as an actual movie one day. I'd, uh, pay, so, I'd pay so much money. I mean... Watch the internet historian reading of it because they animate the whole thing. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. He did the same thing with uh, Sonic High School. The Sonic what? What's Sonic High School? You don't know what Sonic High School is? No. All right, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> but it's like the best <laughs> fan fiction ever written. Um, okay. So, uh, if if I'm talking about a, we're we're getting jump. Jump. Boom. Okay, so we're not talking specifically about the movie anymore. If I'm saying about the literary tradition of self-insert okay. characters, do you have any idea who I'm talking about? Of self-insert characters? Yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to say three names, and you are going to know two of them. Okay. You're going to know the last author, but you're not going to know what I'm talking about. Okay. Give, give me one. Okay. Try, try, to, try to guess. Okay. I want to see, because there's one that I think you would know. Okay. Oh, am, am I supposed to guess them? Yes. Or? Yes. Oh, just, yeah. just any of them? Yeah. Um, some self-insert characters, huh? Well, the Bible's one of them. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> actually, you're not far off, which is hilarious. Um, oh, there's man. three from classical, and I have three more modern ones, like, okay. within the last 20 years, or I guess 30 years. Um, but so the, the, the classical ones, all right, you know Lancelot? Sir Lancelot. Yeah. So in Arthurian tradition, everyone was from England because obviously. But the stories actually got rewritten uh, because they were like an oral tradition thing. They were passed mm-hmm. out in a weird way. Uh, when they were canonized, they eventually got reworked by a French author mm-hmm. who decided, hey, what if there was a, a knight from France, and he was the best knight, and nobody could beat him in a sword fight, and he actually gets the girl instead of King Arthur. Hmm. That's Sir Lancelot. Like, the most expansive piece of self-insert fan fiction in the entire history. And people have a lot of theories about the fact that it's actually the main character Prospero, who's a wizard, is meant to be Shakespeare and the whole thing is an allegory for the idea of this being, because it was uh, potentially the last play he ever wrote. It was definitely one of, but it might have been the last one. And in that context it actually makes a lot of sense for it to be an allegory about him writing his last play. So it's like in that's what I mean, like, self-insert fiction isn't always a bad thing. It's a way of exploring the idea of, like, here's a character that I'm going to be able to write realistically because it's me and I understand my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, that's the way a lot of fan fiction isn't, but the way that it could be good. Um, and we, we have a, a negative perception of the way that the self their character looks because of the Mary Sue story, where instead of taking yourself and all of your actual flaws and putting yourself in the story, which is what like, the Tempest is, mm-hmm. or even like Lancelot, it was seen as like a good thing at the time, the fact that he romanced Guinevere, but it's also like still an admittance of like cheating on this person and it being a negative form of romance. Um, but with the start of like Mary Sue, it became a I'm in this story and I'm the best person ever, and this is my total fantasy instead of exploring the world through yourself. Um, but even with that said, there are still a lot of modern stories with self insert characters that are received like amazingly by people. It's just the fact that we can only respect it if you don't think of it as a self-inserted character. And I can name three off the top of my head. And you... What? Oh, no, no. I'm oh, getting ready okay. to count them. Okay. Uh, number one, Hermione Granger. Okay. You can see that. Obviously, that's supposed to be J.K. Rowling's fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, that's literally number the two, smartest person alive. The smartest person alive knows everything about everything despite having no real reason to know anything about anything. Right. Uh, blah, 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 whatever. All right, number two, Percy Jackson. Uh, it's it's not really a self-insert, but the story is basically him. Like, so the, the characters, the Demigods, all have ADHD and dyslexia, which I believe Rick Reardon's kids both have or his one son does or something, and this is like a story that he told him that night to make him like feel happier about the fact that he had these like uh, learning disabilities. Mm-hmm. And it was like a, a way of conception. And that's why it's like seen as a good thing is because it's taking that flaw and making it into like a power thing 
And that's why it's like a more positive one where more people do know that that's clearly self-insert, but that's why it's seen as positive. And I think that's interesting. Um, and the last one is uh, Leonardo DiCaprio from Inception. Because you've, you've read the thing about how Inception is just a metaphor for filmmaking. Yeah. And uh, like, obviously, Leonardo DiCaprio is supposed to be Christopher Nolan. So it, it's the fact that we self-insert fiction is inherently a negative thing. But we just kind of had it tainted for us. The fact that we both immediately thought that was like a funny negative thing mm -hmm. is more implicit of the way that we in the modern era perceive that kind of character as opposed to the role that's actually playing in the story. Given the fact that we can still continue to make those kinds of characters and we still think of them as like fantastic characters in those fictions. So what I think about it is... <laughs>